It's such an awkward position you've put me in. What's up, sons? It's Blind Rodden with Sound of Attack once again, and as promised, I have the three Windows 10 optimizations for Ryzen specifically, along with a couple other tips and tricks, and one big no-no, so stick around. Okay, so to get things started off, let's talk about some of the components. We are going to be testing with an 1800X. It's going to be mated to a Biostar X370 GT7 motherboard with 32 gigabytes of 2800 megahertz G-Skill Trident Z memory. That's actually clocked at 2666 megahertz. And it's all running on a Toshiba RD400. And then we have a copy of Windows 10 Pro. The graphics card is the Titan XP, but it shouldn't come into play in these tests as we're specifically specifically only testing Cinebench just to get a general idea of the overall performance impro improvements for the CPU itself for each of these settings. Now of course there is always going to be a variance so when the chart comes up pay attention to the error bars which will show you the plus or minus error which are quite large gaps in Cinebench with Ryzen specifically because you do have that capability of its um, learning, machine learning capabilities to learn what you might be doing. It's, it's prediction. It's, uh, it's prediction. It's predicting. Yeah. Why can't I remember the name of that? I'll probably put it up here somewhere, but let's get to it. First, I'm going to kind of talk about the changes we've made and how to make them. So the first one was actually pretty simple. It's just going to be turning Windows Defender off. Now, if you guys haven't noticed, turning Windows Defender off is actually quite difficult in Windows 10. And this isn't a Ryzen specific thing either. I would recommend getting rid of Windows Defender and using some other sort of anti-malware as it's just not the greatest solution. But if you want to actually get rid of it completely, you're going to need to go into your group policy, navigate to your computer configuration, Windows components, and then Windows Defender. And then you're going to want to edit the policy that says turn off Windows Defender and set it to enabled, then reboot your PC. Now, if you take a look at the chart here, oops, spoilers coming up, you'll see that we have a base of 1560 score in Cinebench. Now this was with Windows Defender on, this is just a clean install of Windows. Of course with the initial options of turning everything off except for Cortana, I do leave Cortana on. Now just by turning off Windows Defender we got to a score of 1618. Now that seems super impressive but there's a caveat to that. The Windows Defender during the run they got me 1560 was right after initial boot which I can go ahead and verify that we had a, a scan running from Windows Defender during this time, but I want you guys to see the drastic difference in performance if you do have this kind of automatic scan going on in the background while you're trying to multitask or run some sort of application and you don't want Windows Defender on, but it is doing it anyways without your knowing or wanting. The rest of these are actually going to be Ryzen specific, so let's get into it. The first one is going to be H-P-E-T. H-Pet is what I like to call it. And you want to pet that pet nice, nice, nicely. And I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to enable the HPET. If you guys have been running Ryzen Master already, you know that it's going to have you run a bat file in the AMD folder, actually the Ryzen folder or Ryzen Master folder, and you can run that .bat file reboot and do the same thing as plugging in this command. However, if you're manually overclocking in your BIOS and you haven't heard of this yet, let's talk about it. What you're going to want to do is right click on your start menu and then select command prompt and run as administrator. Once that's open I'm going to put the command in the description below and you're just going to run that command and then once it's complete and says that it's good and enabled you're going to reboot the computer this is one of the options that you have to make sure you reboot for it to take effect now you'll see that even just from turning on the feature itself we went from 1618 score in Cinebench R15 to a 1631. So that's a pretty good uh, performance boost, especially at these stock clocks, just for doing nothing other than enabling this feature. The final Windows 10 modification you need to make for <clears throat> 
Ooh, a spider. Well, good thing I'm moving soon. Don't tell anyone. Alrighty, so the final setting you're going to want to go ahead and change is going to be setting your power options. So you're just going to go search for power options, open that baby up, and then you're going to want to click show more options and select the high performance mode. Now, I don't really think you have to reboot to see the results from this right away but if you I would just go ahead and state reboot before you go ahead and continue your testing and you'll see about a bump of 10 points in Cinebench or at least an average of that and that's from the 1631 on my system to 1640 just with enabling the high performance mode now both of these changes were recommended by AMD themselves so it's nothing brand new however the Windows Defender is something special and I'm going to go ahead and show you something else here. If you guys aren't familiar with group policy it's a very powerful tool and there's another setting you can go ahead and change. One of the things that always bugs me about Windows 10 is that little notification action center in the bottom right that freaking somehow always ends up with all your Facebook notifications and just starts pulling all that information and I'm like ah that bugs me. So you can actually turn it off in group policy by navigating to user configuration administrative templates, start menu and taskbar, and then turn off notifications. Uh, what is it? Sorry, excuse me. It's remove notifications in Action Center. Once you do this, you won't have all those annoying pop-ups in the bottom right, and I assume you're a power user and know when you need to make changes to your PC and are aware of keeping up to date with all your update security patches and so on and so forth. If you're not, go ahead and leave that on. The other thing you can do is turn off user tracking in this section, so definitely scroll up, find that user tracking and turn that off. That's something that Barnacle's Nerdgasm uh, talked about in his kind of thwarting Windows 10 policies or kind of a user, what is it? User spying policies. Yeah, pretty much. So there's a lot of other options in here. Be careful with them. You could hurt yourself and then not be able to recover and don't come into my comments saying, oh, I changed something and then, yeah, I'm, yeah. Go find another IT guy for that today, guys. Finally, if you are trying to get all of the performance out of your system and you don't really care about all the visuals in the visual effects in Windows 10, you can go to adjust performance and appearance options. I will just make a caveat here. Don't just click adjust for best performance, apply and leave, especially if you're on anything 1080, anything above 1080p. There's going to be like some really bad, I guess, jaggies on the lettering, especially when like browsing web and trying to read articles or reading chat. So make sure you leave on the smoothing for those boxes. I definitely just want to clarify so you guys can actually have a usable, readable screen, you know, but it's going to take away all the shadows on the icons and the bubbly stuff. And I leave it off personally, most of it, uh, except for, like I said, the lettering there. Finally, the big no-no in the chart. I'm sure you guys saw that little thing that said Ryzen Master Open. What was that? That's a, what, why is that score so low? And why'd you put it on the far right like that? Well, cause it wasn't part of that natural scale. Every change was an incremental change and I didn't have all of the other options not configured and only configured that option. So it wasn't like I could do a bar graph. What I was showing was the, if you have Windows Defender off, and you have HP and T enabled, you'll get a 1631. And if you have all three configured, like I showed you in this video, then you'll have 1640. Now, if you have all three of those enabled and you're starting to overclock <laughs> and you leave Ryzen Master open, you'll drop your score from a 1640 to a 1575. And this is verifiable multiple times. I will go ahead and link my hwbot.org org profile where you can check out all of my benchmarks so you can see that I've been playing with Ryzen quite a bit especially this particular setup and every single time every single benchmark if I leave Ryzen Master open I lose tons of performance and this is something that I noticed in the Jay's Two Cents video or his overclocking video where he said I don't think I'm going to get above 1700. Now I did leave a comment and of course nobody replied because I'm just a peasant but I said hey 
close Ryzen Master because he was leaving it, leaving it open. If he closes Ryzen Master, he'll be above 1800. I had the same clocks as him at one point, and all I had to do, and it took me forever to figure it out too, guys. All I had to do, close Ryzen Master. There's like 30 extra points, 35 extra points. I think I went from a 1775 to an 1820 just from closing Ryzen Master. Another thing you want to keep in mind here too is because of those learning abilities, all of these tests had to be run four times before I got the final score. Meaning that because it learns what you're doing, it definitely caches the most recent thing you're doing. And AMD recommends running all benchmarks four times to get the peak performance or the correct performance. I They say correct performance. I say peak performance because it isn't correct performance. Let's not, let's not kid around here. But just to make sure you want to run it four times. And the reason for this is, is because if you make the change and then run it right after it, right after you make the change, it's going to appear that it's better just because it just previously cached that benchmark right away. So that's the notes. That's the big no, no. Make sure you guys go tell Jay's to close Ryzen master so we can see him break 1800 on his 1800 X Ryzen system. Cause that would be super cool. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like comment and subscribe down below. And as always, I will see you next Tuesday. Peace.